Howdy folks, uh, Chris Mohan coming in, new road reflections, doing a couple extra of these this week, uh, since there won't be a Citizen Revolution show, I figured I'd give you guys a, a, a an extra dose of me yelling in my car, uh, <laughs> um, <coughs> but, uh, it's been a, it's been a wild week, so. Another reminder, but I, you know, of uh, I'm not doing the show on uh, on Friday the 9th. I'm postponing that one to November seventh. Uh, doing do, doing two shows that weekend. It'll be a Friday and a Saturday show. And and if you intended on getting tickets or uh, bought tickets to, you know, all the October shows since we're since we're paring them down, I've uh, I've I've adjusted the ticket link for the October sixteenth show uh, to include. I don't know if you can hear that bass. That bass is crazy. But uh, I've uh, included a, a ticket link to the uh, or or a, or a tier to the ticket link for the October sixteenth show, where you can purchase tickets for all uh, all five of um, the October and November shows. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, check those out. Krishmohanhaha dot com. Um, did did a video yesterday about about the whole Trump getting COVID thing. Uh, and I want to kind of piggyback off of that a little bit more based on some of the events that we've seen happen, uh, in the last 24 hours. When I recorded that video, I, you know, I was in my car and I was driving and they hadn't really confirmed that he was leaving the hospital. Uh, and then when I got to my destination, it was confirmed that he was, he was leaving the hospital. So, um, he's out. He's he's back at the White House and he's and he's probably not isolating or or locking down or quarantining or any of that shit uh, because why would you? Why would you? Why would you? You know, there's 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 14 people within the White House staff, senior staff that uh, that already have the virus that are that 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 have to quarantine that have to isolate. And you were in the hospital for what three days, and then your doctors are like, "Yeah, get them home." But we're gonna put you on a steroid that we put a, put people on for that have like, you know, intense pain and are in like life threatening conditions. But go home, no big deal. Carry on. It's fucking crazy to me. His own doctors are fucking saying that too, which is which is another thing that is just like, oh man, do we like do we trust these doctors? Like, have they politicized the notion of medicine? Kind of feels like they've politicized the notion of medicine, where I feel like if this was, um, you know, possibly a Democrat or something, they wouldn't feel the need to do this strongman bullshit. Which I, you know, uh, uh, this strongman thing is 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 kind of a, I, I think more of an American problem than it is a Democrat Republican problem. Uh, that you know, our leaders are strong. They're the strongest people in the world. Look how our leader walks. He walks out of the hospital dan- daintily tapping the railings. Oh, he is powerful, our leader. Our 74-year-old at-risk leader. That's... Like, that's... It's an American problem. And and, and here's the thing. I watched... uh, You know, I I have a, a little side gig where I take care of an elderly lady. And we watch the news together. And I'm not much on... Uh... I'm not much on the uh, the you know the cable news. I don't watch a lot of the the mainstream media. Um, I, I'll, I'll catch little snippets of it here and there, but it's 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 hard because it's not news. It's just it's a lot of bullshit. <laughs> uh, so if you if you're a big fan of a lot of bullshit, um, yeah, watch yourself uh, watch yourself some CNN, some MSNBC, some. Some some regular NBCs and Fox News and uh, to to a certain degree NPR like they're all corporate controlled fucking news organizations and 
And so I'm watching, I'm watching fucking the nightly show with Lester Holt, and they did a fucking thirty minute special report about him leaving the hospital. Fucking the th- the entire thirty minutes. It's literally him. It's literally Trump coming out of the hospital. The, he tapped. They made a they made a big statement out of that. Oh, look at him. He, he's walking on his own. This is Lester Holt, by the way, of M- of of NBC, who, you know, that entire network has uh, profited off of their vitriol of Trump. And look, I'm not a big Trump guy either. Like, I'm not a Trump guy. I, I feel like if you've watched more than ten seconds of my shit. You should probably know that I'm not a Trump guy. I'm also not a Biden person. I don't. I don't fit in with either political party. Uh, but you know, NBC, MSNBC, CNN have have profited. They made a ton of money uh, off shitting on the dude. Right. That's just how they've done it. Rachel Maddow has run on a conspiracy theory for four years to be the best news show. News show uh, in quotations there. Uh, across the country, in, in the whole world. So, I'm watching this, and Lester Holt and all of his fucking correspondent cronies are just all commenting on, you know, look how strong he looks. Everybody, look. Look how strong our leader looks, huh? Take that, Russia. Take that, Germany. Take that, England. Oh, your frail queen. She hides. She hides behind her emeralds, that queen. But not our strong leader. No, our strong leader walks down the steps of a hospital spreading the disease that is destroying American lives. Destroying the lives of all humanity across the globe. For he is strong, our leader. That's all they kept saying. It looks strong, it looks very manly. Did you see a bulge? I saw a bulge. It's quite the bulge on the president. But this is what the media does, right? Like, like I, I'm pretty sure this is what the media wanted, because this is the thing that's going to sell soap. Had had they had he not left the hospital, right? He did his fucking stupid little joyride thing. Just so dumb. He's 74, at a higher risk. He's not a healthy person. He should continue to be in the hospital. And he was out in three days. And the media is making this big thing. Instead of of the media saying, I think the responsible thing to do would be to listen to the doctors. The entire world is saying his O2 levels were under 90%. It's bad. It was bad. He was in a bad condition over the weekend. And he's taking experimental stuff, right? Brendesivir and some other cocktails of drugs. Now, by the way, the American people... Nope. The American people don't get that drug. Remdesivir is supposed to be $3,000 for people. What? But here we are, leader of the free world with Cadillac health insurance. And then he has the fucking balls to come out and be like, don't let it ruin your lives. Don't let it control you. Don't let the fear control you. Go out there. Lick flagpoles because that's America. Lick American flagpoles. Make out with everybody you see out there. Don't worry about the masks. The biggest mask. Everybody's wearing such large Mask. I got a mask. It was a very nice, petite mask. It was the right size mask. It was the best mask. It's 
so as not to be afraid of the coat. Like, what a fucking idiot. Now a bunch of his followers are going to go out there and be like, I don't need to wear masks anywhere I go. Look at that. I'm not going to be scared. I'm not going to let fear rule my life. Maybe you should be a little afraid. Because <laughs> having no fear at all uh, is a bad thing. The uh, Daredevil, right? Matt Murdock, known as a man without fear. Even he's got a couple fears. Having no fear is just, uh, it's not good. I believe it's a psychological condition too, having no fear. Uh, you know, difficult to tell when danger is around. It's supposed to right now. Right now the mood, uh, I'm <laughs> stuck in traffic under a bridge. And the mood is really striking it to be uh, uh, one of fear. Sometimes, you know, things just happen in a, in a particular way, and it's fucking awesome. But, um, yeah, you know, this is, that's just, it, I mean, the speech is just, it's just comical to watch. Um, but Trump can afford it, right? The reason why Trump doesn't need to be afraid of COVID, even though he's 74, in horrific health, eating fucking... KFC chicken skins all day, you know, jamming potato chips down his gullet, whatever he does, right, he's this obese 74-year-old man that's, like, not healthy, and... The reason why he doesn't, and he, I mean, he's at every high risk thing. Uh, he's a part of every high risk thing. Like, he, he's old, he's unhealthy. Like, the COVID is meant to fucking destroy him. That's, that's really what, it, like, that's what the disease does. Uh, is, is specifically like you're, you're its primary target. I mean, everybody's its, everybody's its target, but like, you're, you're, primary. You're like the first one that it'll go after. You're the fucking fawn with the with the broken hoof that the like the wolf of covid is going to go after. But he doesn't have to worry about it because he's got all this Cadillac shit and everything for him is paid for. So he walked he probably walked out of Walter Reed with fucking zero medical bills. You think fucking Donald Trump with his tax loopholes and his Cadillac health insurance is in debt? at all is in medical debt at all at fucking all no no he's not because he's part of the elite and the elite get even though they have a massive amount of wealth get away with this shit and the people that can't afford it are the ones that are stuck in debt because health care is another way to keep people enslaved you think you think people that get COVID now and go to the hospital to get treatment or, or and and want to try some of this experimental shit are aren't walking out of there with uh, the, the thousands upon thousands of thousands of dollars of medical debt? There's no fucking way. Then he has the balls to go on there and be like, "Don't don't be afraid." You can fucking say that, jackass, because. You and every fucking member of Congress. And again, it perpetuates that American strongman bullshit. And he has now become the example of it, which again, he, he should, they don't want him to be the example of it, right? Because he's not, he's not what, what they want people to see as the, uh, the example of American exceptionalism or, uh, the, the American strongman. Like, that's not who they want uh, in the forefront of that. So so they hate him for it. They hate him for it. They hate him for revealing all the shit, and they hate him for being the example of it. But they're like, ah, fuck, you're making American nationalism look bad. Like, even the Democrats were like, we could rah-rah around it, but fucking hey, man. You put out a spread of fast food for international dignitaries. What the fuck, bro?
They hate him for it. So, but it's not like Joe Biden is is immune to it either, right? I mean, Joe Biden, anytime you ask the question about his cognitive uh, cognitive health, and, and that is something that I think is still under question, or should be under question, um, he got banned, and he would strongman it. Come on, man! Get out of here! Come on! Look, I'll tell you what. Look, man, come on. Look, I'll tell you something. Right now is that Mexicans and blacks are different, and and look, the blacks are not that much fun. Okay, the Mexicans got all those colors. The blacks only got one color, and it's black. I've seen Blade. And it's like, what the fuck just happened? That's all Joe Biden does. You know, and then he has to walk it back and be like, it's a joke. Locker rooms. Come on. Comedy clubs. I like jokes. I'm relatable. I took a train. I took a train. But any point of weakness, you know, you got you got a life-threatening disease, and you need to stay in the hospital for two weeks so that you can be monitored properly. You're on a, you're on an intense steroid. No, don't be afraid of this thing. Don't be afraid of this thing. That if you even survive it, you'll be in so much medical debt that you'll never be able to repay it, and your heart's going to be damaged forever, and your lungs might not recover properly. Come on! Then there's all this revelation of these Republican fucking senators that are just like, they're just one after another. One after another. Just getting it. Seriously, like, I, I mean, Wave 2 doesn't even need that much help between fucking... The Republican Party and their and their anti-science bullshit. And America is just hyper-obsession with sports. It's like, dude, Wave 2's got it covered. Wave 2 will take out another fucking 200,000 people, no problem. Because everybody wants to go and, and, and be in the stands to watch football. And, you know, Republicans want to just go lick each other's faces in a fucking eyes-wide-shut party. Attending press conferences with no masks on. Saying, what are we doing? 200,000 people are dead in America because of this shit. And you don't want to be any, you don't want to be careful at all. And, And your message to people isn't, hey, I think it's time to put a mask on and be careful out there. Don't, don't let fear rule your life, but be smart and be careful. You, like, what the fuck? And then you have the media perpetuating it. He's so strong. When do they, they never, they never say anything nice about him unless he's doing some crazy shit. Like fucking the mother of all bombs, right? He bombed an Assyrian air base. They're like, oh, he's presidential. When he's blowing shit up, when he's blowing brown countries up, he's presidential. When he's, when he's doing something controversial and proving to the rest of the world that you can get a life-threatening illness, but if you, if you have a steady diet of capitalism and chicken skins, boy, you're a strong president. Just perpetuate that fucking American strongman bullshit. No, this is serious. At this point, nobody should be walking out of their houses and going into close, enclosed spaces without a mask on. We shouldn't be fucking doing that shit. If you're going to be around a lot of people, put a fucking mask on. And he's not out of the woods. Let's be let's be honest about it. He's not out of the woods. His condition could deteriorate at, at any at, at any day within the next week and a half. And they won't talk about it. And part of the fear I do genuinely think is because if they do and they have to invoke the 25th Amendment where the where it goes down the line of order, um, <laughs> I don't think they believe that Pence can get as many supporters as Trump, but Pence might be able to get some of the Republicans that are tired of Trump, maybe some of the libertarians. 
depending on social conservatism. Really, Pence, Pence locks in that social conservatism. And I think the fear in the party is, in the Republican Party, is that, you know, he can't, Pence can't get the, like, he can't get as much traction under his belt. Uh, and he might not be, I don't know. You know, it, it becomes a bigger crapshoot. It becomes a much bigger crapshoot if something goes catastrophic and, and Trump is unable to continue the presidency. But, you know, again, I said, I think, I believe I said this yesterday. I might have said this yesterday. But, you know, Pence, McConnell, Ted Cruz, if Nancy Pelosi, these are people we should be holding their feet to the fire. These are people that we should be actively fighting against. Donald Trump is just a symptom of a much larger disease. And so are all these people, but, you know, I think that Pence is, is a little bit more dangerous. Uh, you know, Nancy Pelosi already has proven that she's dangerous. And she might have it, too. She, she met with Hope Hicks. All the people that went to that, uh, the, 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 the hearing for the Supreme Court judge, who also might have it. I mean, we, we truly don't know the number of uh, congressional people that have been infected by this thing, like the, the you know the White House staff, the uh, Trump's family, all these people, and they'll all and they'll all downplay it, which again is also part of his plan because he said that he wanted to downplay it from the start, uh, and he wants to continue downplaying it so that it doesn't create panic. And it's like, nah, bro, I think you did it. I think you're. I think the panic's already been created. The next two weeks. Um, are are really going to be uh, interesting to watch in terms of, well, not interesting to watch. Uh, it, it, it's it's going to be a bunch of media bullshit about it. Um, you know, Lester Holt fucking spent thirty minutes. He literally followed a helicopter. You know what else you could have done? You know what else you could have done? You could have fucking talked about Julian Assange. You could have been like, hey, this asshole's leaving the hospital. Boy, that seems uh, unnecessary. He's going to get on a fucking helicopter and go home. And deliver some fucking speech. I guess he was able to walk on his own. Great. Awesome. Hey, our press freedoms are in danger because we're indicting Julian Assange. We're trying to extradite him for revealing American war crimes and crimes of the elite. And Lester Holt will never fucking do that because Lester Holt is the mouthpiece for the elites. Rachel Maddow, Tucker Carlson, all of these fucking people are mouthpieces of the elites. I mean, at least Tucker Carlson will have Glenn Greenwald and Tulsi Gabbard on there to talk about Julian Assange. But these liberal fucking networks won't, right? These these champions of everybody. Not when it comes to revealing crimes of the elites, they won't. Not when it comes to truly supporting the working class, they won't. Instead, they'll fucking sit there and spend 30 minutes talking about how strong Trump is. This again becomes the root of capitalism. Because that's advertising. Oh, we're crossing party lines. Look how nice this is. They're not crossing party lines. They're just revealing who they actually are. They're all making money off of each other. At the end of the day, they're all very good for each other. Rachel Maddow is very good for Trump, and Trump is really good for Rachel Maddow. Same thing with Lester Holt. You know, if they have an anti-Trump story, their fucking ratings are going to go through the roof. It's just... Astounding to me, you know, and, and the media perpetuates this. The American strongman is a fundamental core of being a part of capitalism. We have not seen the true extent of how bad things are. Um, yeah, that's. I think that's where I'm going to leave that. Uh, ranted quite a bit about all this stuff. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like. Make sure you share. Uh, leave a comment if you would like to leave a comment. I try to respond to the, as many of those as I possibly can. Uh, like I said, no show on Friday because I'm still taking care of the cat. Uh, he's recovering. He's getting there. He's still a little skittish and 
kind of getting used to his surroundings. It's a little cat update towards the, at the end here, uh, but he's but he's getting a little bit better. Um, you know, uh, sleep, sleep is sleep is difficult sometimes. It's around seven a.m. that he like wakes us up because he and because he realizes that you know the meds wear off and he likes to walk around in the bed and wake wake my girlfriend and I up. Uh, but you know he's doing okay. And uh, I think he's he's well on his way to the recovery. Uh, soon enough, he'll be able to just kind of explore and walk around a little bit. Um, what else? What else? To, uh, go to my website for all my stuff, all the tickets, uh, donations, sustaining members. If you can become a sustaining member, you get a bunch of cool stuff. I got to do quite a bit of updating on the on the Patreon and the sustaining member end of things. Uh, I have fallen behind on a few few things here and there, but uh, working on get work, working on that. Uh, but uh, go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, support the independent media. Support the independent media. Uh, all right. Thank you guys for uh, for tuning in, and I hope to see you guys at the next one.